other than, as I said, the MAC range, figuring out that way, it makes it very difficult to determine what the device is right off the bat. Contributing. Um, I'd love to have an enormous list of, of profiles. The more that people contribute, the better, the better, and uh, the more accurate things will be. Um, the, there's a couple caveats to that. Uh, so I wanted the, the name, the address, and the class. No more or less. I don't care where you got it, I don't care how you got it. Um, just as long as you post those three things. Uh, I want to sanitize the information. Um, it is publicly available information, so there should be no problem with it. But um, just to, to be nice, uh, sanitizing things like the name, anything that looks like a name, replace it. Uh, the place information or other is for the category that if you're like, this is kind of, this might be sensitive. I wonder if I could ask him, just, just re replace it with other. I, it's not that important to have the, the name for everything, except for, as I said, the statistics earlier. That's most of the reason why I don't just replace the name right off the bat. It could help with uh, some other research um, down the road. So I've, uh, I've created a, a forum on my website uh, where people can just post the logs that they find. And um, I will uh, update the, the full list um, as I get more posts. So here's my nice little DEF CON list. Um, I thought this would bring the home, bring point the, the home, um, I phrased that completely wrong. Um, so this is just a couple of them. Uh, I've been scanning all of DEF CON. Congratulations, people do actually do hacking stuff at DEF CON. Uh, and if you thought you would turn off your Bluetooth device, I see some people in the audience right now, they're like, yeah, wait, I think my phone's Bluetooth is off, but, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know how many collectors, I didn't get a list. Yeah, I'm going to go with about 250 different profiles that I found here. Um, and I wasn't even, this wasn't like an effort I made. I didn't try to get every room or go all around. It's mostly been sitting in the Hackers or Charity booth, booth. So if you, if you went to the vendor area, you probably, you know, got scanned there or walking around a little bit. So this is just a couple of them. Um, I, uh, I liked Fail Phone. Clever naming. Um, I removed the star, star, star is actually people's real names. Um, and you can see what devices uh, give those out. Uh, this is, yeah, as I said, just a couple. So, you know, be aware that whatever you name it, if you don't know what you've named it, it's probably giving something out. <laughs> I mean, if it, you know, if you rename it to, to uh, fail phone, then you're like, okay, well, obviously you took the effort and you know it's going to be named. If you don't know what it's named, you might want to check that out. Um, and uh, oh, I meant to say this, this list was uh, inspired by the, the Wall of Sheep guys. So I'm going to be posting some of this stuff with them later on. Um, so this is a short list. If you want to see that you were scanned, you might be able to check out the Wall of Sheep a little later. So that's the obfuscation side. That's, that's the, you know, data collection and everything like that. Um, now we'll get into the offensive side of things. Um, so a vCard. So this is one of the tools that I've been working on called vCard Blaster. Um, a V-card is a virtual business card, uh, essentially. You probably have used them before. A lot of places have them for, for download or information on people. Um, it works, syncs up with like Outlook. It, it creates the profile So if you for your contact list. Um, and it's heavily used in Bluetooth. A lot of the Bluetooth-enabled phones will be able to share things over uh, V-cards, which makes things you know, a lot easier. Instead of all the business cards going around, you just sync up your devices, you know, send it over, and life is good. But some of them uh, that allow it, sometimes it'll come up with a prompt that says, you know, would you like to allow this V card? And you're like, oh, yeah, sure, I just met that guy. Or, uh, you know, we need to pair before you can send that over. Some of them, however, don't do that for this particular feature. Um, and I can understand why in the development of it they decided, you know, oh, well, obviously if you're just going to send a V card over, there's nothing bad about it. Uh, but there could be. Um, what V card a blaster does, is it allows you to send a constant stream of V cards to a particular uh, device or to all devices in range. Um, one, a couple of different things, let's see, yeah. Uh, a couple of different things this can do. Uh, one is potentially fill up the disk drive. Uh, v cards, while they can just contain email or your name or your phone number, they can actually contain a lot more than that, like images. So if you could send a constant stream of V cards uh, with you know, very large file types, you could potentially fill up the disk of something that's a very small PDA or a PDA with a very low amount of memory or if, if it's partition memory. Um, the other thing is you can add contacts to people's uh, devices. 
So that could be interesting uh, just to see what you want to add. The other thing is actually if you want to add a ton of random names in there, you've officially made it very hard for them to make a phone call because if the contact list had 100 people and now it's got 10,000 people in it, <laughs> they're never going to find mom. Mom, 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 where is it down there? And uh, I don't know of any quick way to remove new contacts most of the time. I'm pretty sure it's a manual process. So unless they have some sort of backup of, of their contact list, they have to go in and manu manually remove all of it. Um, something I'm going to be working on is actually uh, the random name generation. So that's not in there right now. But I'm going to be adding that so it will randomly generate a name. Um, you can't have the same name in the contact list. A lot of times they'll, they'll get angry about that. They'll say, are you sure you want to replace this? And you don't want to make the user aware that this attack is going on. So uh, I will have it so it randomly generates and doesn't double up on the names so you can fill it up that way and they look like legitimate ones. Because right now uh, I just have a random character of strings so they can pretty much tell that it's not legit. So this is what the attack looks like. Um, I can demo it. No, I don't have the demo one. Sorry, it's dead. My bad. But this is exactly what it would look like. Uh, so the flags up there. Uh, you, gosh, can you guys? Yeah, you can't really see it that well. So I'll describe what it is. Um, it has a dash G flag for generating. Um, a dash I twenty to say run it twenty times instead of ten thousand times. Um, uh, the, t the dash T, um, it's running, it has to do with the threading to see if it times out. A lot of these things will just continue to work so it will freeze up. So uh, you want to add a, a timeout option in there. And then uh, just the director, you can either select a specific vCard or vCard Blaster will generate one for you and then send that information on. So that's pretty much what's going on here. Um, I have a string that I gave it, big brother. And it's randomly generating text after that so that it won't prompt the user to replace the current contact. Uh, so this one, I, I wish I could show how quick it runs. And once that they initially you know, connect, it's you know, milliseconds to copy these over. So you can fill up a contact list pretty darn quick. Yeah, the live demo thing, not going to happen. Um, Blooper is actually a, a very similar um, type of program. It's exactly the same except for it's not vCards, it's any type of other file. So the process for sending these files is exactly the same. However, when it gets on the PDA side, they know that vCards are supposed to be interpreted this way and possibly other files are interpreted certain other ways and then the rest of them are like for download. So it's basically the same principle except um, Not, not to single you out or anything. I'll just, I'll just hold on here. Um, yes, yeah, so it's the same principle, as, but it has a different kind of denial of service. Uh, well, I guess it's the similar as the first one I mentioned. Um, what it does is I found on specific devices, um, actually this specific device, that uh, what happened is normally when you want to transfer a file, and some of you might have done this through Bluetooth before, you say you either need to make a connection, it says somebody wants to connect and then you connect and then it says, okay, now I want to transfer a file. Or it says, you know, Bob is transferring a file to you, do you accept? And when you click accept, it starts downloading it. Uh, I found on a particular device that what it actually did was it would cache the file and then prompt the user for the download. I don't know where it would cache because forensics on PDAs is very difficult and I haven't actually found how it caches it or where it caches it but it caches it nonetheless and that's before it prompts the user that the interaction is going on. Um, that's assuming a couple things like it allows anonymous connections. So this is, a, this is only one specific device that I've tested it on. It might work on a lot of others. I really just haven't had any funding to, to test a whole list of things and people don't like giving me their phones anymore for some reason. So, uh, so yeah, so what you can do is as I mentioned before, you can fill up a disk of a device with a, a low disk space um, and this one works a lot better because the vCard one, you know, you might have 20 lines of text you're sending. This one you can actually uh, generate, I think in the, yeah, uh, you can generate a file of whatever size you want and send that. Um, so you could send a specific file if you want, which is fine by me, but I thought I would just uh, offer to randomly generate a file because what's important here isn't the file, it's that it's causing uh, uh, it to fill up the disk space. So you can generate a file of, of 10 kilobytes or, you know, 5 gig if you really wanted to. Of course, 5 gig over Bluetooth would take forever and ever and ever. Bluetooth is not designed 
for heavy use. You know, you don't want to like, pass an ISO over Bluetooth. That generally will not go very well. Um, it's a very low data rate compared to um, Wi-Fi. It's two megabits slash three-ish megabits, um, and that's you know like theoretical max stuff. So, uh, so it does take a while. That's the one caveat of this thing of this attack is you really have to be next to somebody for a very very long time. It's not going. You're going to. This isn't going to be very effective at a coffee shop. You're going to have to. If you if you're going to performing this attack, it's got to be a device that's um, around for a, an extended period of time, hours, maybe a day, um, depending on how much disk space there is and if the attack is effective. Oh yeah, the I put the it can cause it to crash. So when I was testing this, um, once I accidentally hit OK or uh, so it. it, it I send a bunch of files at once. You can send one file or a lot of files. However, you know, if you want to test it with the device to see what's more effective. So I started, you know, caching the files and then it says, you know, do you want to reject them? Do you want to say okay for this file or do you want to download them all? And I just happened to actually I accidentally click uh, accept all. And so uh, long story short, it took what was in this memory, which was almost full, and it tried to write it over into the real file system. So we completely ran out of disk space. Um, and I don't know if it ran into the memory because a lot of these devices actually, you know, their hard drive space and their RAM are actually, you know, the same actual physical chip or chip uh, uh, flash or something like that. So what happened is it actually completely uh, fried the device and I had to do a factory reset, which was fun. It took me forever to figure out, you know, what was going on and it, it died. And then bringing it back up, it would not boot. It would not boot. So I actually had to do the manual like factory reset to get that to work. So that's a nice little attack when you completely brick the system um, and has to do a total factory reset. So this is what it looks like. Um, I, um, I can attempt the demo over here. Uh, yeah, actually, I'll do the demo and then come back to see what this looks like. So, to scan for a Bluetooth device in uh, Linux, HCI tool, scan, you could use Spooftooth, this is just uh, quick um, and easy. So Spooftooth, uh, the advantage over, over just running like a script that will do this is that Spooftooth only logs it once. So if you're doing a, <laughs> thank you, thank you whoever out there, uh, it's hard to see, it says Ronan's mum. <laughs> Fanboy, thank you. <laughs> okay, so I'm sure people have been pounding on this thing because it's a Bluetooth lock and I enabled Bluetooth on this. Um, so we're going to try to run this. Let's see. Uh, against this file. So, uh, sorry, let's see if I can boost this up a little bit. That didn't do anything. It's a little better. One more. Yeah, okay. So that's the command I'm going to run against my Dell Axum up here. And should have just copied and pasted that like I just did. It would have been faster. No. Ah. Uh, oh, <laughs> I should. Uh, I I need. I'm actually trying to upload a file that doesn't exist. Evil file. Wait. Oh, that's not good. Okay, well that didn't work at all. <laughs> um, I don't know. Oh, and I know why the. Uh, haven't updated this system. I apologize for that. Um, but the attack would have looked exactly like this. So that's actually the system's fault. The program should work fine. Uh, I guess I should mention that a lot of these are actually generating a script internally. So that's why actually that failed is I didn't include some of the code. I actually just end up bundling into a script. The new versions that I'm working on right now will have everything in it so you don't have to install um, some of these tools, some of these additional packages, and that's the reason that failed right now. But anyway, uh, so what I have here that's hard to see is um, it's going through 500 iterations and it's uh, using a file um, that I'm generating of size uh, 10,000. And you can select the file name, the current file name.